This is the Pete and Sebastian Show with Pete Corielli and Sebastian Maniscalco. All right. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Pete and Sebastian Show. Another episode, another day here at Pete Corielli. Um, what, what kind of thermos is that? It's a water bottle right out of the kitchen. Big water right. bottle, yeah. Yeah. Did, did uh, your manager buy you that? Uh, no. Did you the manager get a gift? got me did- cookies. What? You got cookies? Nice, big, fat bunch of them, homemade cookies. I got no problem with that gift right now where we're at with the, yeah. Same. I know, the cookies shit. probably. Cookies in the thermos, same shit, bro. What do you do? What do you do? What do you, what do you touting cookies over there, bro? Come on. Man. I'm not touting cookies, but I don't, you know what? It's like, it's a tough thing. I don't want to go into that whole, like, uh. You, you you know you saw where you you do a project with someone and it happens to be December so then you get a gift for them. Um, it gets. Let, let, how do I best explain? Okay, every year from this awesome dude who's a listener to the cast and has become a friend. His name is Sam Luffy out of Pittsburgh. Literally has become a friend. Cool dude, right? Owns a company. Younger guy does well for himself out in Pittsburgh. So maybe. Five years ago for Christmas, <clears throat> guy sends me a nice ham and bacon from this uh, this this place. Like, just great bacon, like cowboy bacon, thick. So we have the bacon on Christmas morning. Save the ham for Easter. Next year, I get the ham, I get the bacon again. Kids eats the bacon. Third year, I get the bacon again. Now my daughter's going... <clears throat> Dad, I love every Christmas having this bacon. It's so great. It's like a tradition. So now, now I'm like, when is this guy going to reach a certain age where he's like busy with his life and he doesn't listen to the cast anymore and he taps out as a listener? And, and, and when am I not going to get this ham? And when I don't get the ham, fourth year, got it. This year was the fifth year. And I didn't get the ham, right? I said to Jackie, it's over. It's fine. You know what? And I go, maybe it's better to peel the Band-Aid because it's like losing a pet. It's like very sad to not get the. And then two days before Christmas, I got the ham. <laughs> I got the ham again, bro. So I texted him and I basically said all this to him in the text. I go, bro, it's going to be so sad the day I don't get the ham because it's going to mean that life has moved on. But not this year. <laughs> but not this year. <laughs> he goes, that's the best response I ever got. And as long as I got the company, you're going to get the ham. <laughs> so. <laughs> oh, shit. Uh, bro, only you I can say that kind of shit. But I have a good time doing this cast with you after all these years, bro. Yeah, cheers, bro. Cheers to the Stanley Cup. All right. There you go. <laughs> um, I want to bring, bring a video to your attention because when I saw it, I kind of thought of you, and I want to play it for you, right? And we could discuss it after we play it. It's it's at an airport, and for those of you, I forget that we don't have, we have people who actually listen to the cast, not watch the cast. So let's show a video of a guy getting a little irate at a airport uh, gate. And I want to play the video, and I'm not going to say either way what my thoughts are. I, I want you to explain your thoughts. So uh, let's 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 throw it up there for Pete to watch. Uh, this has audio, so we're going to be able to hear it. All right, let take a look. Blow, can we blow it up a little bit? I'm good, Chef. Remember your girls. I'm good, Chef. You don't care about the girls? You don't care about the girls. You don't care about the girls. Hello, everybody. Dustin. American Airlines. Fuck this over. Sorry. Right. Here we go. Dustin. Here. I'm not kidding. Don't. You don't care about girls. So I want to tell you about Shelby and Dolly. Shelby and Dolly. Shelby and Dolly. We're gonna do it. I'm gonna do it for you. Shelby and Dolly. That's it. Shelby and Dolly. Remember. Remember them. Shelby and Dolly. Remember them. I will. I, I am. 
I'm just trying to get home to the girl. Really, really. Look, look, I have my uh, paper dog. <laughs> Fuck off, bitch. Fuck off, bitch. Okay. Mm -hmm. What you think? On the whole thing, right? Yeah, that's yeah these guys. I, I saw. I read. I actually read about that. I didn't see the video. And I, so now seeing the video, uh, he seems like he's drunk or something. Yeah, it's not rational. You know, I mean, it's not how you would do it. Like, it's not how I, I would do it in a way that the people like the way I do it. I'd be like, excuse me, everybody. I hope you have a better experience because I just got fucked by American. You know, like this guy, the dogs and lunatics. Yeah. See, that's why I wanted you to comment first. The fact that you are relating to this in a way where you go, the way I would do it. Right. When I saw that, I didn't have that. I didn't have that like reaction where I go, Oh, if that was me, I would have done if that was me and the American didn't get me on the plane. From me walking away from the gate to going to wherever I'm gonna go, you would not know what the hell just happened with my interaction with American Airlines. There would be no, I would not turn to the group and go, guys, <laughs> you know what they just did to me? They bought me for a flight next week. No one would right. know, nothing. My, my, my question to you is, why do you feel compelled to turn around and talk to the group as if they were waiting to find out right, what happened right, right. with your flight? <laughs> exactly. <the> yeah. <laughs> I know. Because he's crazy. He's and not only that, I mean I wouldn't do that. What I'm saying, but if I were to do that, but I would yeah, never like, turn why is that even in your why what do you mean if you if I were to do that? Like why is that even I'll an be, option uh, to do uh, that? The only I'm saying if I was ever gonna address everybody behind me, but the only way I could ever see that happening is if I'm yelling so much. And then I turn around to everyone and go, I apologize for yelling, folks, but I'm getting fucked by American, like something like that. But this guy's doing a, a, a Why are a you play. yelling? Why are you even yelling? Bro, <laughs> I have never turned to the passengers and got them involved. I am doing a what if. So stop acting like I do that. No, I think I'm you've saying, done this. I think you've done, not this, but a, a version of this where you're talking to the people in line and you're getting hot and bothered and you have volume when you go you did this remember with the to the lady and the lady said sir sir and then you had yeah but that was her <laughs> she worked there yeah yeah but i don't i don't turn around to the people and go do you believe this lady but absolutely i yell at them the people i'm the ticket lady for sure i i've given <laughs> them a so so when you're if you were having a moment at the ticket counter you don't even get hot with the ticket person I don't get hot. Bro. Oh man, I've never had, had any type of like <clears throat> volume going. What do you mean you can't get me on? They go, I, I hear we're gonna have to push you, and I say, okay. When? The next flight. All right, nothing possible here. No, and that's it. There's there, there's no. Uh, what do you mean? There's none of that. There's no. <sighs> there's no. I'm. Where's the man? It. There's none of that. I take it in, I get yeah. hit with the punch, right? And I walk away. <laughs> wow, man, that's I mean, to that's... keep that anger in. <laughs> All right, guys, did you know on average it takes about mm, thirty days for a person to break their New Year's Eve resolution? So, if saving money was on your twenty twenty four list, your odds aren't looking that great. Luckily. I have a 100% guaranteed way to save money this year. Just switch to Mint Mobile. For a limited time, wireless plans from Mint Mobile are $15 a month when you purchase a three-month plan. That's unlimited talk, text, and data for $15 a month. Think about all the money you might save on Mint Mobile, a plan with Mint Mobile. Are you kidding me? Mint Mobile is here to rescue you with premium wireless plans for just 15 bucks a month. Say bye-bye to your overpriced wireless plans, jaw-dropping monthly bills, and unexpected overages. 
All plans come with unlimited talk and text plus high-speed data delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. Use your own phone with any Mint Mobile plan and bring your phone number along with all your existing contacts. Nothing changes. Nothing except the low price of your bill. Ditch overpriced wireless with Mint Mobile's limited time deal and get premium wireless service again for just 15 bucks a month. To get this new customer offer and your new three-month unlimited wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month, go to mintmobile.com slash the cast. That's mintmobile.com slash the cast. Cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash the cast. The cast is all one word, the cast, okay? Additional taxes, fees, and restrictions apply. See Mint Mobile for details. Time to start saving money. <laughs> I yeah. listen. I know this p- person I'm dealing with isn't the reason that what's happening to me is happening. But the idea is, because I work front desk, and you know, when someone's yelling at me, I'm going to take that back the next day to my boss and say, "You got to tell these people making reservations to stop promising this or that," because I'm getting beat up. So I feel like <clears throat> if I don't say anything to the ticket person, then they're going to think everything's fine, and everyone's just going to keep getting fucked. Because they're walking away like you. You got to give it a little bit so then she goes back and goes, hey, we got to stop, you know, canceling flights. I'm getting killed out there. This Italian guy went off on me. (laughs) So while this is happening at the airport, right, and the guy, I assume these two are together uh, romantically, uh, I'm assuming, uh, could be wrong. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, and they have kids at home, right? And the one guy is pleading to his partner, "Think of the kids, think of the kids," because he sees it escalating. Where maybe this guy will be face down in the carpeting soon, with handcuffs behind him, and they're gonna take him, take him away. I don't understand the American public in, in the sense that they tend to get loud and argumentative <clears throat> at the airport and I know there's a lot of frustrations there but the airport right, right. to be lipping off at an airport after yeah. 9-11 right yeah. it's just you're, you're, you're asking to get thrown in jail and put on some no fly list right like like yeah you, you, they don't put up with it anymore at all at all yeah two things two things I want to say though is I read the article first of all. I don't know if you noticed, but like they were talking about their kids. They were talking about their dogs. They're gay, and their dogs are Shelby and whatever. Oh my god! And they were se- and they were separated. Oh, hold on, hold on, bro. Wait, they were flying with their. I didn't even know the story. Yeah. Expl- I'm sorry. Yeah. I, I I have to say this to the listeners. I did not know the story. Uh, so please explain. Uh, yeah. the, <laughs> explain they the are story. gay, as you as you said. They are okay. gay, and okay. their flight got the got messed up. And they're traveling with their dogs, and they wanted to be back with their dogs, but they're like, well, we can't till we get you on whatever flight. So the one guy was freaking out, and the other one was like basically saying, remember the kids, meaning the dogs, because if you freak out, we're not going to see our dogs for a long time. So you have to keep it together for the kids. And then the gay guy turns to the woman in the wheelchair and says, our dogs are our kids, Shelby and Baba Ba. And she says to him, well, this she has like a rescue dog with her, yeah. and she says, "Well, you're frightening my dog," and that's when he says, "Fuck off, bitch." <laughs> yeah, so, so there's a lot of crazy going on there, a lot of crazy, you know. Even the lady yelling, "You're scaring my dog," You're scaring your dog. Well, well, you know where I wouldn't scare your dog uh, if it was in its fucking doghouse in the backyard. <laughs> then I wouldn't scare it. <laughs> Holy shit. You're crazy. I'm bookended by crazy here. <laughs> by the way, before I forget, I had a flight. I meant to tell you recently. I'll make this quick. I was flying uh, uh, from Charleston uh, back to Columbus, Ohio, because I did a show in Columbus, which is four hours away. Then I flew to Charleston, did a show in Charleston. Then I flew back to Columbus just to get my car and drive home. Now, we're at the uh, on the plane, small plane from Charleston, South Carolina to Columbus early in the morning. And there's a dude on there, and he's saying, the flight attendant's leaning over to a woman, and she's saying, uh, as an African-American gentleman in the window aisle, and the flight attendant also happened to be African-American woman, and she's like, uh, we're going to go now, baby. Are you staying on, or are you getting off? And he's holding up his hand, like, because he's got his phone here. Hold up, hold up. 
And she goes, we're about to close the door. I can't hold up. Once we close the door, we're gone. You can't change your mind when we're out on the runway. And he goes, hold up, hold up. And he's waiting on the phone. I'm waiting for a call. I'm waiting for the call. So then some of the other passengers start going, let's go, let's go, you know? Like they're getting a little... And now I'm getting worried. Like, let's just, one way or another, let's square this. Because if this becomes an altercation, then we're all going to have to get off. And then I'm not going to get back today to Columbus. Probably only one... So I'm getting worried. Uh, and then finally, because I'm like, what the hell is he doing? <clears throat> and she, and uh, the guy next to me yells out, we got to go, we got to go, <laughs> right? And then that dude starts looking around like this. He's getting real mad. So then the flight attendant says one more time, listen, we got to go. I don't know who you're trying to call. And he goes, I'm waiting for my manager to let, because the manager missed the flight. I'm waiting for my manager to find out if my manager wants me to go. I do what my manager says. If he says go, I go. He was a performer. I think like maybe a rapper. So that, I swear to God, bro, at that point, I go, manager, I go, we're in coach, guy. And everybody laughed. And everybody laughed, you know? And then, and then he goes, and then he finally finishes up with his guy. I mean, I didn't make him finally finish up, but it was a funny laugh. We're like, manager, we're coach. <laughs> well, <laughs> did, did he and your know? your manager's going to let you know if you should take the flight to Columbus? We're flying coach to Columbus, Ohio. <laughs> Nobody's winning. Nobody's winning. All right. <laughs> What? Did he know you said that? Did he know you said that? <clears throat> no, because the big guy next to me who was yelling, we've got to go, we got to go, was a big guy, and he was, like, taking over the area. So I was just like, we're in coach, guy. You know, almost sounded like the petite, <laughs> almost sounded like the petite wife right behind them, you know? Uh, so. God, that's a great line, man. That's but anyway, yeah, I can't believe you're a quiet guy. Those people are nuts in that thing. They're crazy. Yeah. Turning around to everybody. Yeah, I just. I, I saw. I saw. Yeah. No, I, ne I never felt the urge. And I've never gotten out of control like that where, you know, like to me, the guy who's trying to calm the other guy down that's a deal breaker. Like when we're on the flight home, if I'm the guy that was the quiet one, I go to the, the loud one going, I want you to pack your things and take one of the dogs and get the fuck out of my apartment. Like, like, right, right, right. right. The, 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 like if Lana, did, if Lana did that, I would have to tell Lana, we're going to have to see a lawyer when we get home. I mean, I, <laughs> I don't know. Right. The judgment there yeah. is, is not right. <laughs> I but I I can't. I don't mind. Look, things happen. I get it. Flights get canceled. I don't like when they don't even apologize. They don't even care that your shit's fucked up. You know. But I have to say before I forget, th this Pete. I'm gonna butcher the last name. Pete Budacheg or whatever. Well, I don't yeah, know how much you follow this. But he's in charge of the airlines, and they were a nightmare. And I got to say, and I'm knocking on wood, but lately, everything's shooting out on time. No delays. I think we're going to start hearing the news soon. This guy, Buttigieg, figured <laughs> this shit out. I, I'm, I'm telling you. And maybe I'm the first one that will be saying it publicly. Like, they're like Buttigieg is going to hear this on the cast and go, <laughs> finally, someone's saying it, but... <laughs> Everything's been running very tight, very tight. So, and and I know that was a big thing he was trying to get fixed. So, kudos well, to this guy. Give it up to give it up to, to what's his name? Pete Budacheg. <sighs> That's how I say it, but we all know that means nothing. Budacheg. I think it's Budacheg. 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 <laughs> Buddha judge. Yeah, here he is. 41 years old. He's uh I thought he was running for president at one point. He was. Oh, he was. Yeah. He probably will right. again somewhere down the line. Clip this out and tag Buddha Chedge. See if he uh he's a listener. So we'll we'll clip this out, put it up on social media this week and see if this guy uh if this guy listens yeah. to the cast. And maybe we could get yeah, uh Maybe we could get the based on your compliment to this guy, Pete. Maybe you yeah. could. And get, listen, 
This guy's also escorted ex, through you know, the airport. Maybe he's got a plan where you just get escorted through the airport. You don't have to go through any security or no nothing. You just go around all who, that stuff. Who me? Because of Bo- it, my connection with Buttigieg. Yeah, it, if Buttigieg oh, dude, absolutely. finds out <laughs> finds oh out that you that you're complimenting him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, and you get a call from him going, <clears throat> "Man, listen, I've been breaking my ass over here. Finally, somebody recognized all the work I've been doing. I like to pay it back, Pete. Anytime you fly, what we have uh, here at the at the at the transportation committee is a, it, we call it we call it a free pass. And it's a, it's a Pete pass. It's a Pete pass. <laughs> it's a Pete Pete because his first name is Pete Buttigieg." And here's these special cards, like you got the Chipotle card, you get a beat pass. <laughs> Don't even ask the ID, you just show that and stroll right through everything. Oh, I love it, bro. I hear what you're saying. Oh, man, oh, man. That would be oh. nice. Yeah, he's doing good work. He's doing good work. He's someone you know, you'd want to know in life. He's a movement right. shaker. He's going to be. <clears throat> um, Excuse me. Is he, what is he? Is he Republican, Democrat? Does it say there? He's a Democrat. He's he's a gay man married. They have a child. But he was also in the armed forces, an ex-vet. I mean, this guy's like, he checks right. every box. I'm a man's man, but yet gay with a child <laughs> at the same time. <laughs> I, you know what I mean? Like, you know, could kick my ass and, you know, and, you know, you know, burps a baby and, you know, all that kind of, I don't know, well, I burp a baby too, but you know what I'm saying. Anyway, yeah. Um, he's, a, he's a man of the people. Bro, um, yeah, go ahead. I'm cutting you off. What do you got? Uh, I want to get into. I went skiing with the family and uh, Deer right. Valley. Yeah. Okay. First time going skiing with the family. Last time I went skiing was about 14 years ago to Deer Valley with Lana. I am not a big skier. And uh, I had a great time. She kind of taught me how to ski, it was really nice. So, this is in Utah. I had never heard of this until you told me when we were talking. Yeah, Utah, Park City, Park City, Utah. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, I didn't know that's where it is. Why don't you say Park City? Well, it's it's like saying L.A., but you stayed in Malibu, I guess. Oh, all right. Got you. Got you. So the amount of. <sighs> I'm not listen. I, I don't know the ins and outs of like the ski, the lodge, the you get your skis here, you store them. This you fitted. Th- there's just so many moving parts to skiing that I'm not really privy to. And Lana knows the game inside and out. She basically grew up in Deer Valley. They had a house there uh, growing up. So I get there, right? And I'm not skiing. I'm just not skiing because if I, I'm at the age now, the way I feel, if I took a tumble, right? Yeah. Wheelchair, rest of my life. I'm one of those. Good chance of paralysis, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I hear you. So I get the keys up and, I get the kids up and running. Um, You don't think you're too young, you don't think you're too young to be tapping out like that? I am too young now, but again, 2024 with the new health and wellness initiative that I have planned for myself. I plan to be a, a, a backup on the slopes next year. Wow. This trip, this right. trip was so good. <clears throat> this trip was so good. We're planning on making it a yearly thing. All right. Awesome, man. Yeah. Kids loved it. Kids took right to it. Serafina didn't want to get off the hill. She she loved it. The four days of private lessons. They took to it really. And Caruso, I got to tell you, this kid, it, it, it just looks cool everything this guy does is, yeah. is cool <laughs> unlike his father what about- like, i get there bro anything like if you put me in a different environment yeah that whatever that environment is i have the symptoms to an exponential degree and, and this is what i'm talking about high altitude we're ten thousand feet above sea level right it's dry mm-hmm I get up. I'm, I'm I'm bleeding. I'm, I'm fucking constantly bleeding out of my nose. Right? Do you get this? Like when you go to like these high altitudes, do you get like no. a bloody nose? <laughs> no, no. Okay, Jesus. I do. Again, again, 
You, you, you're saying like if you're at an airport and your wife gets loud, you're going to go home and serve a divorce papers. I'm on a mountain with you and at 10,000 feet your nosebleeds. As soon as we get to the base, I'm calling my fucking lawyer too. What are you, a hypo uh, memophiliac? What the fuck is that? Hypophiliac. I mean, is, that even, is that even anything? Uh, I, Look I into that. that. It's a, the guy who Look. can't stop bleeding. There's a word for that. Anyway. Yeah. Hypo. No, that's not it either, dude. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, uh, Correct. Hemophilia. 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 Hemo. Hemophilia. Yeah. Yes. Hemophilia. All right. No, but so I, no, uh, my nose doesn't bleed. Okay, my like nose full bleeds. on bleeding. Yeah. Right. Like you know, I go blow. I I am stuffy. I go blow my nose, and we got blood coming out of my nose. Right. <laughs> yeah. I'm dry. My knuckles they start to like shred. You know, like you get like that, yeah. that scaly skin. Right. Yeah. I yeah. can't breathe. Right. I can't breathe. I can get up from the bed to go to take a piss. I'm out of breath, right? Everything right. that the mountain has to offer, I take to it right. immediately. My wife's that's like My wife's working out on a treadmill. I go, it's a thing. don't you need oxygen? <laughs> no, nothing. Kids are fine. And you're saying I'm dying. like if you if you were on like a cruise ship and they go, some people get seasick, you'd be that person. Yeah. Like you're always the one that gets yeah. the thing. Seasick, uh, yeah. Seasick right, where, right. where it's like, can I see a doctor? It's because this <laughs> my equilibrium's off and I might I might <laughs> I might not recover right. from this. <laughs> so what when you get to the top of the hill though, what are you doing without ski? Like, how are you, how are you involved without skis? How how much involvement do you have in it? You're I not, get you're, them ready. Where are you? I send them off, and I sit at the bottom oh. the, in the lodge, okay. waiting and taking videos. That's that's my job. So, what are you doing? Even going that high? This is like a little area where you I, can go up there and yeah, they they're, they're gone. Oh, that oh yeah. the pl the place is that high to begin with, right? They're on the bunny hill, and then they're on the bunny hill where it's right there. I could videotape them, and then Lana took them to like you know a larger run, and that's it. I lost them. But you're getting a. But I'm saying you're getting a bloody nose on the bunny hill, like at that I level. I get a bloody nose every day since I've been there. The, the bunny oh hill, God. the the room. I thought oh you meant like you're hitting a mountain way up top and your nose bleed. You're like no. walking the fucking town getting bloody noses. Yeah. Cause it's at a, does that <laughs> happen in Denver too? The town is 10,000 square. Uh, yeah, but the what's the cutoff on up. the nose? If I was married to you, could we go to Denver at 8,000 feet or are you going to walk Main Street gushing there too? Listen, bro, I'm thinking <laughs> if I go up a flight of stairs here in LA, <laughs> I might get a bloody nose. All right? Oh, man. Oh God! Yeah, Man, seven thousand feet really... above sea level. It's a park. Yeah, it's it's. Uh... That's, oh my God, bro! That's not even that high. Jesus Christ! If you were like feet. mountain climbing, listen, ten thousand, yeah, ten thousand yeah. feet above sea level. Seven this or was, ten. So, this was seven, but some of the mountains are ten. Oh. <laughs> uh, what, what are we looking at here? Three hundred five feet. Above sea level, right? Yeah, LA is three hundred feet above sea level. All right, so you take right. me from there to seven thousand feet. I'm bleeding. So, uh, okay. So anyone from LA and Park Slope's probably bleeding. I don't know if they are, but I, I, I feel like I, <laughs> I, I, I want to ask you something Who's about. Busted? I, I want to ask you something about blowing your nose in a hotel room. And when uh, if blood comes out, I want to ask you something. Um, right. Do you think it's appropriate to leave a bloody tissue in the waste basket, or do you flush that in the hotel room? Oh, flush! You gotta flush. No one, no one wants to see blood, dude. You gotta. You know what I'm saying? Like, why? Because then, then there's a concern, right? Yeah, I like think there, there there was a a day that I didn't put it in the toilet. I just put it in the waste basket, just because I wasn't even in the bathroom. I just flushed, yeah, you know, and then put it in, put it in a waste basket. Uh, and then I thought about you know, like I, I I normally there's no indication of what I don't like to leave any remnants in the room, right? right. Of 
a weakness that I might have, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. If I'm on <laughs> medic, <laughs> listen. If I'm on medication for something, I don't leave a pill bo- like a pill bottle out next to my toothbrush so when the maid comes in she's clean and she right. goes this guy's got diabetes like or whatever you got right, like, I, <laughs> right. there is right. no sign at <clears throat> all in the room of a deficiency i might all have right. <laughs> do right. you do you do you lay it all out in your room or That's or what it's like because, because you make it hard for the detectives, if you drop dead in a hotel room, right? Because they, they want to come in and just see the pill bottle on the edge and go, oh, Jared, the hot guy. Right, look at that pills. And then do a little shake with them. But you're making them do a hunt. Uh, yeah, not only not only that am I with you, but uh, even when I have my toiletries, I bury my pill bottle so that if TSA means, needs me to open it, I don't even want them to know that. Because all I have is... Percocets in case I throw out the back, but no one needs to need. Yeah, I'm right there. No I don't even to... like people seeing my toothbrush. But oh, no. <laughs> but the, but the the blood. I gotta get back to the blood, bro. Because put it like this: if you were like in the, like just say walking the sidewalk in that little cul-de-sac where you live, and you saw a little white handkerchief, you'd be like, ah, oh, someone dropped a handkerchief. You see that same white handkerchief in that same spot, and there's blood on it. Your brain is going. What happened? That 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 that's there now. Uh, so the minute absolute, someone sees that absolutely. bloody t- tissue, yeah, I know, I know, and I think I made a mistake by putting it in a waste basket. Not as far as not th- anything being out of order. To 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 your point, like, okay, I get out of shower in a hotel, <clears throat> and like I've had times where I'm I'm gonna put my sh- socks on by the bed, and I have towels laid out to get to the bed. And that have my socks there. Wait, wait, hold then on. I don't. Wait, wait, wait. You have a, a a towel trail from the bathroom to the bed. I've yes, I've done that in some of the hotels I stay at. Yes, and I and I set it up prior to getting into the shower, and then I do ah. All right, did you do that mm-hmm. when we stayed in the hotel, the Four Seasons in, in Fort Lauderdale? Did you do a paper? No. no. Are you kidding me? It's not necessary. You could crawl through there, baby. And plus, <laughs> they got the marble floor. No, man. Oh, okay. That's, yeah. Okay. So, depending on where you're staying, you assess yes. the room and go, oh, yeah, this is a towel job. Yes, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. So, and, okay, so um, finish your finish your, st- finish your story. So you go to yeah. the bed, you put your socks. Yeah, on. yeah, yeah. So not only that, not only that. So I'm going to sit on the bed, and now I don't want to waste a full towel for the bed. So I've taken a washcloth, which opens up to a nice square. Sit it on the bed, so my ass is on that instead of on the anything on the on the what? Because they say one of the dirtiest things is the top of the bed, the yeah, yeah, bedspread. Yeah. So then I put everything on, my underwear. Now I'm bottom, bottom lines. Now I'm dressed and I'm looking over and I see the washcloth just sitting on the edge of the bed before I'm getting ready to go do a show that night. And I'm like, gosh, geez, he'd have made to come in here and see the washcloth on the bed. Start wondering, what the fuck is that doing there? So I put it back in the bathroom, but like exactly to your point, you put something weird where it don't belong and, you know, like an ice bucket in the bed or something people get what's going on you know it's it gets it gets uh weird do you leave the towels on the floor before you you pick them up before you leave or you just leave them where they're at i bring them all and put them into the corner uh and then yeah and then the next day it's usually a one day stay in a situation like that but yeah no i kick them into the corner uh yeah, bro. I stayed at one last week that was good. I knew it was gonna be rough. It was just what? a one nighter, real quick. I brought a <laughs> sleeping bag, bro. Full on Coleman sleeping bag, bro. It fucking smelled like dogs. It was an extended stay. It's fucking disgusting. It was really well. I thought. I really thought bad. we, bro. I thought we got over this hump with the. 
you deserve better. You know, stop staying at these places where they got missing kids on the wall. You know, like I, oh. I, I did this, but this was I was on my way to Annapolis, Maryland, and uh, I was getting tired, and I didn't have to be there till the next day. So I'm like, let me just find the spot right here. Boom. I mean, I wasn't gonna. I'm not gonna. I guess I could have done a Marriott, but and then when I get in the extended stay. The lady's like, what floor? We have any floor, first, second, or third. And I go, ah, first is flying. And no sooner did I say that. This is so gross to say. And I'm thinking to myself, shit, I know this place takes dogs. If you have a dog, you're going to want to be on the first floor so you get, get it in and out a lot. I'm probably just checked myself into a heavy dog room. And I checked in and I could fucking smell dog. And I'm like, this is absolutely rock bottom i mean i don't even know i thought I, I could do heroin in here if i was a heroin <laughs> i think i'd still i even i couldn't even do that in here bro man we got to get you out of this rut there's only six hours i was gone i don't six care hours, i don't care if six hours one hour I, I i don't want you in a heroin induced room um i'm gonna show you the photo that jackie had sent us right. Uh, and you you saw the photo too, and I want you to, to explain how in the hell you get into this sleeping pattern uh, at a oh, hotel. I know what you should. I know okay, what you should. Okay, bro. You. Bro. All right. <laughs> oh, Jesus. What, what, could you explain? <laughs> Is the pillow used as a blanket in this particular? <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's what's going on. I'm laying on the hotel bed. And um, I say I got my jeans on and my shirt. Yeah, and we're in we're in New York. All right, all right, dude, off the <laughs> socks, guy. All right, we're done with that. We don't. <laughs> anyway, I, I was taking a we we're watching TV. I was waiting for Jackie to change, and we we're gonna go back out. Me, Sadie, and Jackie in the hotel, and I was freezing, and I couldn't reach the blanket. And uh, those pillows are right there, so I laid them on me. I was like, ooh, that's just the perfect amount of cover I needed. I was well, so tired. And well, then she showed me, she sent it after I woke up. I was pissed, dude. I was like, come on, Jack, what the fuck? Why, why not, bro? I mean, where's your head here? Is it underneath the pillow sandwiched between two pillows? Yeah, because she was blow drying her hair. So I I put my head, but I, I sandwiched it so each ear is covered by a pillow oh, so bro. I can't hear that. And Sadie's got the TV on. So the pillows are working like earplugs. Wow, what a move. Bro. And the midsection wasn't cold because I have the jersey on, but the legs were a little chilly. So, uh, yeah, out like a light. Just needed 20 minutes. <laughs> Shit. So, speaking of sleep, I want to, I wanna... Lana, God, God bless her. She's, uh, I sleep hot. Right. I'm trying to sweat. I, I oh. to get, my body's warm. I sweat, you know, especially if I eat close to bedtime. To, you know. So she bought me, us, this cover that goes over the bed called the uh, Sleep 8 system. Have you heard of this? No. Basically, it's a cover that you can manipulate the temperature on either side of the bed. So Lana's always cold, so she could set hers to warm. So Pete, there's the cover of it, yeah. right? Uh, just, and then you put yeah, your sheets yeah. over it and what have you. So basically what you do is it's hooked up to a, and it, there's a tower next to it. There's a system where you put water in. And basically it brings in cold and hot water to her side. We had side. that. We had that a, a version of that. I do. A, I was doing a whole bit about that. Where it pumps water underneath her sheet at whatever temperature you want. She only got a single because I didn't want any part of it on my side. Oh, okay, okay. So, All right, I know that do, thing. Does she still have it? Uh, no, she threw it out after a while. I mean, she liked it for a little bit. She swore it worked. And then after a while, like, she got the, the first of all, it's noisy. It was kind of like you could hear it. I like total silence. And then uh, you have to use, I think, saline water or like a certain distilled water. Distilled water. So, yeah, and... yeah, yeah. So be... uh, do you like it? I, but I, she I, did for cooling. She gets hot. Oh, yeah. like you. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I, I got this thing on like the, the, hot, the coolest temperature it could get. And it's like an iceberg in there. All right. 
I have never slept better. Really? And this thing measures your heart rate, your deep sleep, Oh wow. REM sleep. It it just it, it's got a whole yeah. It, it you has got an more alarm. of an advanced. Yeah, it's got an alarm had. on it. it. It vibrates to wake you up, right? Just it's a little vibration. You're like, oh, what's that? What's that? Oh, oh. it's time to get up. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta tell you, bro. Yeah, yeah. I, this 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 might be a game changer for my sleep. Because I really? wake, I'm waking, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm waking up now, and you could set it because, ideally, you're supposed to go to bed cold, sleep cold throughout the night, and as you start to come to, you're supposed to be warm. So when you get out of bed, you're warm. You're not shivering, right? Mm-hmm. So I wake up now, toasty, warm, beautiful. And get Mark, can it. you set it that it warms up at a certain hour? Yeah, you could set it throughout the night. There's four settings. You could, uh, when do you, they ask you, do you want it cold, warm, or hot when you get in the bed? Cold. And then there's variations of how cold it could get. And then do you want two hours in? Do you still want it that cold or do you want it a little colder? Or do you want it a little warmer? Like you could set it throughout yeah. the night, right? <laughs> wow, man. What I got to tell you, bro, I got this thing on freezing and it's like sleeping on a block of ice. It's great. It's great. I highly recommend it. <laughs> That's crazy. And Lana's warm. Damn. On her side, if I want a little warmth, I dip a toe on her side. It's fine. it's boiling, right? Uh, and my right, side's right. cold. <laughs> it's great. Now, is it noisy at all? Is it silent or what? There's a little noise coming out of that machine, which I have to try and figure out why that noise is coming. Is it heating it up? What's it doing? Right, right. But once I work out the kinks there, this is called the Sleep Aid System. This is not paid advertisement, the Pete right, Sebastian right. show. But I got to tell you, as soon as I I thought, wow, this is a great, great product, how nice would it be the next time you come out? I got one of these damn things in your bed, in, in the guest room. Like if you yeah. slept at somebody's house mm-hmm. and I told you before you went to bed, Pete, do you, do you like to sleep cold or hot at night? And you're like, what? Like, yeah, what, what, do you, what do you prefer? Oh, I like a nice, you know, I like to say 62 degrees. Yeah, yeah. And I set your bed to your preferred temperature. <laughs> oh, man. Wow. I mean, it's... bro, you already asked me what temp I wanted the pool at. Now you're asking me the bed, the bedroom. I mean, what <laughs> service? What service? <laughs> By the way, while we're talking about luxury in the home and whatnot here, do you buy, did you, did, I never noticed, do you have a boudet anywhere in your house? Yes, I have one. You do? A, it's a bidet. A, a bidet. Bidet, not a boudet. Uh, how, well... Last cast, you said somebody stole with a D on the end of it, and I didn't even say anything. But I mis- mispronounced bidet. That's not. That's not. You know that is. That's that's a that's a regional. That's a regional. Uh, All right, well, grammar issue. That's that's regional. Well, that's not. That's not. okay. <laughs> On Long Island, we call them bidets. But anyway, <laughs> you have a. I, the reason I ask. Uh, I think that I want to get the name right. A guy named Joe Ron, uh, R A N N, and I believe R A A N, uh, fan of the cast. This guy says, I got to send you something. I just want you to know what's coming from me. Uh, I changed my life. Love this thing. Uh, there's no note on it. So just let you know what's coming from me. So I, I got to confirm, but I'm almost positive this is who sent me this thing. But it's a, uh, a bidet. That it's, so it hooks up. You take off the top part of your toilet bowl and you put this on, right? Not not cheap either, not cheap. And the part that shoots out, because it's it's designed, you can set it for three programs. One is for his back, meaning my ass, her back, and her front. And then the thing is like in your toilet, and like and when it's your turn, you press a button, and it comes out far enough to shoot up your ass, 
and then it goes back in its little hole, right? I, I, mean, I was talking to Jackie about it. I go, I, how does like shooting water up my ass going to get, like, isn't it just going to make it splash everywhere? I'm not understanding how it's going to like sh rinse it out. And then I said, who might have one of these things that I could talk to? Boom. You, bro. I don't use it. I don't use it. You don't. I just, no. I, I, it's attached to my have toilet. Have you tried? I, I tried it. Right? So. You, what, what, what would you take? I, I, I don't know if it necessarily is supposed to wash your asshole like clean. You know what I'm saying? Well, the box said the box said you cut back on toilet paper and it has a built-in ready for this after it hits your ass, pre uh, another button kicks in and it dries your ass like an ass air dryer. Yeah. Warm air shoots out of it. Yeah. <sighs> Again, that pressure that comes out of there has to be so violent in order to clean mm -hmm an asshole right like oh. it, it's got to be like the pressure washers at the at the car wash <laughs> i think what that does is is almost like it, it it's just a little watering and then you wipe your ass that now your ass is wet and you get more you know i guess it makes it easier easier yeah all right I don't wow, think it's that's a, I don't think it's for, you know, oh, you do that and all of a sudden you pull your shorts up and now you're walking around with, you know, a clean and I, now you just Yeah, like no. here's my ass, it comes out, <laughs> goes in, dry, kicks in. <laughs> yeah. And I'm walking away, guy. No. Paper, no more paper. No. No, no. no. It's like it, that yeah. thing comes out, sprays water on your ass, and it's shit is still there, and then the dryer comes out. Oh. And dries the shit to your ass cheeks, and then you walk away. That's what I think. That's oh, God, that's Jesus what happens. Christ. This is yeah, this making sucks. clay. Now, listen. My other question is, um, why? Uh, why would? What about like? Can you set it for warm water? Because even if I put this thing up, I'm saying to Jackie, it's cold water is going to be hitting you, cool shit. Six a.m. in the morning. Who wants that? And she's like, oh, that's a good point. Also, ask Sebastian if you got if if they have one. If you can set it for warm water. Yeah. Mindset for warm water. It's in the to it's in the within the toilet though. This thing. Yeah. It comes with the, the right. toilet is you buy the toilet with it with it in it. It's right. not an attachment. So it's easier to yeah. manipulate the temperature of the water. It's better. It's better. Yeah, yeah. This one then when you hook this one up, it also has like a a, a control uh, like a, almost like a t old T V remote to work everything. Yeah, yeah. And that yeah. goes next to it. So it looks like a. It starts to look like a hospital room <laughs> toilet. I know. You know? I, I, I've seen those. I've seen those, and I. I go. Oh, I see that, and I go. Oh, they can't wipe their own ass. You know, like, <laughs> yes, man, it is. I bet after he's done spraying that up his ass, he sits in the chair and takes a ride up to the second floor of his fucking house along the railing. <laughs> right. <laughs> Climbs in his Eric Roberts walking tub. Oh, <laughs> um, so, but yeah, bro, I I'm I'm really into the skiing, and uh, well, you, but you, you're not skiing, I, not yet. You're into but, the environment. But I like oh, you're the, gonna. That's right, you're gonna. I like the gonna, fact that the kids are skiing. Yeah, Lana loved it. Lana can't wait to go back. Let's go back next month. She reconnected with her family out there. She's got some cousins out there. Awesome. It's probably the, gorgeous skiing out there too. Oh, right? It's like how everyone goes there. Beautiful. They got the, the hotel had a lot of things for the kids to do, and uh, we met some new friends out there. I mean, bro, I mean, new new friends. This is like, wow. wow. I'm, I'm telling you, ski life is like a different. It's just yeah. a different lifestyle up there it's every, the clean air people are happy quality of life is nice we even talked about I find too yeah good good you, you tend to the skiing weeds out to a lot of the uh obese you know what i'm saying fat people snowmobile skinny people ski <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it, it, it skiing does 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 eliminate a lot of different walks of life. I mean, 
Uh, a lot honest, of riffraff. No, no <laughs> one gets mugged on the ski slope, right? <laughs> no. Okay, you already got mugged paying to get on the fucking ski slope. <laughs> Jesus, right? <laughs> I mean, come on. No, but you're right. Exactly, man. Exactly. I mean, oh. the biggest danger is some hot shot hitting you flying by. That always scares the shit out of me, too, man. Yeah, no, that, that definitely is a, is a threat up there. But... Uh, yeah, no one gets out. mugged on the slope. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. No um, one's protesting. <laughs> uh, but I did go. I, I did go tubing. All right. Yeah. Okay. We do that every year. What do, you, what do you think? You like it? I can't. I, you know, this is this is part of me, and it's part of my family's thinking is there was a two hills one for kids between the ages of one and five and another one six and up right so we go on the one caruso's four we go on the one one to five we all go down and alana goes let's go on the adult one and i said well caruso's not old enough to go up there. She's like, eh, who cares? Let's go. Now, I'm a rule. I abide by the rules. <laughs> right? if, if you tell yeah. me six and up, <laughs> I do six and up. Lana's <laughs> one of these, like, okay, eh, okay. So I go, well, what if the, you know, she goes, look at these, look at these guys working the hill. They, they they don't give a shit. They're high out of their minds. They they don't care. <laughs> right. Like they just can't like, wait till they can go ski. Yeah, the they can't. They're working there. Yeah, they're daredevils. They're, they 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 were three and they were on the adult <laughs> slope. So what do they give a <laughs> shit? Right. 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 So, of course, we walk by. You know, my son is in front of me, and the guy's like working the hill. He's like, "All right, buddy, have fun." This guy, this guy's like, hey, "Jesus!" This guy's telling my four year old to have fun on the adult hill. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> so we get we get up there and Lana goes we have seven with us we have four kids and three adults uh, her her uncle or her cousin was there with his niece and nephew so Lana, so Lana gets up and goes how many of us could go down at once and the guy's like hey 18 years old hey well how many do you got <laughs> like is there right. any safety restrictions here uh, right no uh, no the Lana, sign is there yeah go ahead yeah the sign's there for liability yeah Lana goes seven he goes he looks at us he goes we'll make it work I, go, okay. I don't want to hear that I don't want to hear it. we'll make it work well we're not even supposed to be on this hill <laughs> so we're all going to go in a single file line. The other kids that we are with are like seven and nine. So they got the seven-year-old, then Caruso, then Serafina, and then the nine-year-old. Basically, we went from like youngest to oldest. Right. And and you're supposed to hold on to the other person's string or whatever they got, the uh, uh, handle, whatever. We all go down. Within the first, I'd say, 10 seconds, the line breaks. So my son is now holding on to the nine-year-old's tube. Everybody's laughing. I'm in complete panic mode. I'm analyzing everybody. Okay, I'm here. If Caruso falls, I'm going to try. I'm, I'm trying to analyze and, 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 and predict catastrophe. Right, right. Of course, nothing happened. Everybody right. had a great time. We get to the bottom of the hill, and you know, you know what? I got a problem with people who linger at the bottom of the hill and they don't like leave so the next person could go. It's like a water slide. Oh, yeah. You know, the water slide. Yeah. You don't hang out in the pool of water where people are going to be coming well, down. Uh, so I'm one of these guys. It. Again, rule a rule abider. I get up and I start moving, and I'm with the and the rest of my group is like kind of lagging, going, "Isn't that fun? Talk about it over here." 
Perfect. Exactly. Take it over there, then we'll do that on the line. Oh, that was crazy, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I'm I, right I, there with you. I, they, totally, bro. Get the safety, and then we discuss what we just did. We don't discuss it on the hill. So, of course, one of the guys is like, hey, everybody, get off the hill. It's another thing I don't do. I never get reprimanded for, like, not following the rules of the road, right? I'm always right, the guy right. off, and my wife is always the one going, oh, where, where's, where's Car Caruso? Was that fun? No, no, what the, get the fuck off the thing. Here's another person. No, so uh, I had a blast, bro. I got, I, got, I got to admit, tubing's my new thing. I might not be yeah, able to like, ski it, but tubing is- It's new. fun. It's fun. But don't you think that, like, if Lana wasn't Lana, you wouldn't have did it? Like, that's what's great. You know what I'm saying? Like, you would have been on the bunny one. Hey, this is all two more years, Caruso, then we can go with the big boys. <laughs> what the fuck? You know? <laughs> so, thank God you married who you married, bro. And it's funny, my mother asked me the other day as I was driving her home from my house. She goes, what do you love about Lana most? And I said, Lana gets me out of my comfort zone, right? Because just yeah. to your point, I would have been sitting on a bunny hill going down like a sh you know an asshole. Come on, let's do this yeah. again. Instead, we were all up there together. We were all going down together. Me and Caruso went down, just him and I, right? And no fear. This kid's got no fear. I grew up with fear. I grew up with, wee, wee. Yeah. The fact that these kids are growing up the way they're growing up is definitely a bonus. And it never would have happened if Lana didn't facilitate right? yeah. breaking the rules. Do your kids make fun of you yet? Especially your oldest. Is she old enough yet? Like, about that, like, Sadie's already making fun of me. Like, all right, Dad. Dad's always worried. No, yeah. no, no. Like, yeah, because dad's going to be the one who has to deal with it that's when right. something happens. That's what. Dad, right, dad's you know? going to be the one they're going to turn to when, like, do you know how to give CPR? And I'm like, no, because I was never put in a situation where we had to give CPR. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly, man. We never get to the point where I'm doing 85 miles an hour down a hill holding on to my nine-year-old cousin's ankle for my fucking life, man. Never happened. Yeah. <laughs> Different times. <laughs> I got a friend of mine. His name is John. And he is completely confident that he could save his kid's life at any, give, at any given moment. And they do everything together. You know, it's like he's... He, I go, aren't you afraid that they're going to go? He goes, if, if anything happens, I'm completely confident that I could save their lives. I could give them CPR. Oh. I could bandage a. a oh, wow. A, uh, I could do a tourniquet. I could do. This, this guy has no fear of anything. Therefore, he's going to enjoy life to the fullest because if, God forbid, anything ever happens to his kids, he goes, I could handle it. And I go, I can't. All right. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> the bunny hill. <laughs> That's it, man. But you're also you're enjoying your life your own way. You know what I mean? This is, you know, this happens to be one of those things that you did, and you're like, "Wow, I got to do this again." But I guess it does make you wonder how many other things you you, you pussied out on that you know. Oh God, you might have loved pussied yeah. out on a lot of things. And I want to point out something that we pointed out last cast, and we're gonna point out this cast, but. What I want is I want a, I want to do a, a little interactive uh, poll with our listeners, and I want to uh, you to remove your hand from your mouth right now and just kind of yeah yeah, and let's take a still of that <clears throat> if we can, mm -hmm. uh, Patrick. Whenever yeah. you're in post production, and I want to get the fans' uh, take on the no bearded. Pete it's look. Uh, what? Even Jackie said, "Grow it." Even Jackie said, "All right, you you well, did that." Yeah, now. Jackie. Jackie said it. Use that. But can we get a consensus of what the fans think of? Do you like Pete clean shaven, or do you like him with a beard? Uh -huh. And <laughs> Pete says the he wrinkles, looks ill. The wrinkles. This, bro. 
I get these like every man gets them. But then when you get older, now I'm getting the secondary ones. Oh. Secondary. Oh my God. Like I just like right there. This is, oh, I need a facelift. No, no, no. What you need is some filler. You need a little filler. Pop some filler. Next time you come out to LA, you can get some filler popped into your face to fill that right out. Really? Yeah. Like Botox. You're talking Botox. No, no. I'm talking filler. Like they shoot, like, I don't know exactly what it is inside your skin where it actually fills out your face. Nah, just grow a beard. I say grow a beard. Yeah. yeah I bother. You're still, st- you're still staying at fucking murder hotels. You're going to get filler? <laughs> <laughs> Once in a um, while. Once in a while, yeah. All right. Um, that's it for today's show. I, uh, I, that's uh, it? Um, Pete's coming out, I don't know, end of the month. We're going to have some guests line up. We have some guests line nice. up already. I'm reaching out to a few people on my end here. Uh, hopefully we'll... Uh, well, I'll just tell you we have we have Dane Cook confirmed. He's going to be on the show. Awesome. Before we're talking awesome. to Dane, Dane and I kind of came up together here in Los Angeles, um, and we got some other we got some other uh, guests on the back burner, not confirmed yet, but we'll see. And uh, there was yeah, good. There was one one I asked you about that I was I said, oh maybe I can do a reach out, and you go, I tried. I don't want to say his name because I don't know if we're going to say it. But you said he said he doesn't he doesn't want, uh, he second guesses himself too much. That guy. Yes. yes. I feel like I could have gave him a presentation that might have got him on because I'm, I'm a big muse. What I got to reach out now if I if I get his stuff through an agent, uh, I'll do Go that because I don't want to get. Oh, dude, that's right. Let's do that. All right, because I'm coming to the music did. angle. Music angle. Come from a music angle. Uh, anyway, yeah, I'm looking forward to coming out, man, yeah, doing man. these uh, interviews again. Fun. We'll have a ball. We'll have a ball. Until then, this is Pete and Sebastian's show. We will see you next week. Thanks again for tuning in.